Welcome, everybody, to week six of Inside the IFL. I am your host, Todd Tryon. I thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day and checking out what's going on inside of our great league. We're in our 15th season, and uh, today we're going to talk about week five. Quick recap on uh, we had six games this past weekend. Uh, we're going to show you our plays of the week. I've got a great interview coming up here with Coach Roberson, and we're going to talk about week six. Uh, and stay tuned at the end. We had a major announcement. CBS Sports Network going to be broadcasting uh, at least minimum next three uh, of our national championship games. Uh, but I'll close this out with a little more detail in, in regards to that. But let's get into some week five action as, as we had some outstanding games going on. Uh, we had uh, three games on Saturday night and uh, we had three games for you Sunday. And uh, let's get uh, to the our big game of the weekend uh, on paper Two undefeated teams, one versus two, but it ended up being a pretty one-sided affair. We had Massachusetts and Frisco in Frisco, and uh, Frisco controlled that game uh, pretty much from start to finish in a dominating fashion, 56-39. Uh, I'm guessing that that uh, rival, rivalry will continue up there in Massachusetts here in a few weeks, uh, but 56-39. Uh, our other game we had, we had Quad Cities going to Tulsa. Tulsa opened up and 8,000 plus people, uh, a great home opener for them. Uh, it, it was, this is their inaugural season. They had a beautiful new black field. Everything was dressed up perfect. Great crowd, but Quad City handled them. And, uh, you know, EJ Hilliard did what he does. And it's it, uh, 68 to 42. Quad Cities uh, got, got, uh, got out of there with a win. And then our last game of the night, and it was an entertaining, competitive game. Uh, the score, I don't think, indicates how close this game really was. But uh, Arizona, can't coming off a tough loss against Tucson, took on a very, very competitive Duke City team, and they came out of there with the win. Arizona winning that 48-37 to to cap off and end our uh, Saturday night of action. Uh, Sunday, as I said, we had three games for you. And our first one saw Green Bay. Green Bay traveling to Sioux Falls, and the first time – in Green Bay history, they win at Sioux Falls. That is two games in a row that Coach Roberson has uh, beat the Sioux Falls Storm, and they get an opportunity this coming weekend as they play back-to-back -to, -back, uh, to take on Sioux Falls again to see if he can continue that streak. Uh, but Sioux Falls led by 16 points in the fourth quarter. Green Bay uh, scored 21 unanswered points, winning that one, or it's 20. Three unanswered, don't quote me on that, but winning that 47 uh, 241, Green Bay pulls out the victory. Uh, our next game it was not a game. Uh, San Diego traveled up to Northern Arizona. Northern Arizona showed why they're the defending champions as they had an impressive defensive coach. Les Moss had that defense in tune and uh, they won that 48 to 9. 48 to 9, Northern Arizona. Uh, they officially, I think, are looking like a defending champion right now. And they got a big game this weekend. And so San Diego looks to get back on track, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And then our last game of the night, uh, this, this was supposed to be a great one, and it was a great one. Tucson at Bay Area. Tucson has been our surprise team. Bay Area was our preseason number two. Uh, coming off a loss uh, at Massachusetts, bye week, take on Tucson, and uh, Bay Area came out 16 to nothing lead. And I don't know what Coach Chen said to his players, but they decided not to let uh, Bay Area score many more points. And Tucson came roaring back in the second half, beating them 34 to 30. So it was a great way to cap off week five. Um, and so go ahead and sit back, and I want you to check out some of our plays of the week.
All right, there you have it. That closes week five. We move into week six. This is our first weekend where all 14 teams are in action. Seven games. We've got uh, two Friday night, four Saturday, one Sunday. Got them all spread out perfectly for you. You know, Saturday night, we're running into the problem, running into a problem. We've got multiple games going at one time. We've got a solution for you, and it's coming to you soon. So pay attention to another announcement here as we look to solve the problem of multiple games kicking off at one time. But Friday night, we've got the rematch of Sioux Falls going up to Green Bay. They played Sunday. They turn around and play Friday. All right, so I'm guessing coaches just, you know, keep the scouting report on your desk. Uh, some things will change, but you two are going at it again, and uh, that is a 6.05 kickoff. I expect a great crowd. Trinklers do a great job there in, in, in hosting these events. Uh, look for a great game there Friday night. Uh, and then we have – that's at 6.05, and then just as that game's getting done, we've got a competitive, competitive intriguing matchup there in Vegas. We've got the Duke City Gladiators – traveling to the Vegas Nighthawks uh, for the late game, 9.05 kickoff. Should be a great one. Vegas coming off a tough loss and then has a bye. Duke City coming off a tough loss. Both lit to get back on, on the winning track uh, as we've got Duke City going to Vegas. Then Saturday, three games for you. Uh, four games for you, my fault. Three of them are being kicked off at 7.05. One at 8.05. The first one, a, a great conference battle. You've got Massachusetts traveling to a hot quad cities. Massachusetts coming off a tough loss there in Frisco, going up against a hot E.J. Hilliard, Coach Ross in quad cities. Should be an outstanding game. Uh, then we've got Arizona Rattlers traveling to the undefeated Frisco. Uh, Frisco Fighters. We currently have two teams undefeated. Frisco Fighters being one of them. Arizona Rattlers looks to go to Frisco uh, to knock off, uh, to, to give Frisco their first loss. So it should be a great game. Uh, the third game that we have is we've got Tulsa looking for their first win, traveling to Iowa looking for their first win. Uh, Iowa just signed Jonathan Bain last week. So they look to have a, a quarterback back in the saddle that's looking to get them the win. That should be a great game. And as Iowa's home opener, uh, sh should be a great one. Iowa taking on Tulsa, 7.05 Central kickoff. And then our nightcap on Saturday night, Tucson opens up their homestand. Tucson undefeated, taking on the San Diego Strike Force. And uh, I look for a more competitive uh, San Diego team uh, to show up. For those of you that remember, San Diego went to Tucson last year, knocked them off 69-65 in an absolute shootout. Might be another one. So that is Saturday night. So, Let's move into Sunday because we got one game left for you. Uh, Sunday night, 7.05 Central Time kickoff. And I think this one is going to be another great one. Northern Arizona, who is playing well, uh, is traveling to Bay Area, who's looking uh, to get things back on track. And so that is a 7.05 kickoff Central. They're in Bay Area. Uh, and so that will wrap up week six. So great lineup for you guys this weekend. Once again, you can view it free on YouTube. We're on Twitch. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on multiple platforms. No excuse not to check out our games uh, as, as they're uh, sprinkled in all weekend. Uh, but let's circle back to our first game. All right. Our first game of, of uh, week six has Sioux Falls going to Green Bay. I've got Coach Roberson on here with me. And uh, so let's go ahead and bring in Coach Roberson. Coach, we good? Yeah, we good. We good. How you hey, doing? Coach, I'm doing great. You're doing great. I appreciate your time. I know you just got done there with, with practice. You guys got back from a, a road trip to Sioux Falls. Big win for you. Congratulations. Thank I know you. that was your first uh, win in Sioux Falls. Absolutely. Uh, so excited for you. <laughs> yeah, no, first, that was the first of many, right, for uh, Green Bay. Uh, it's been a, been a long time coming uh, since 2010, and first time uh, Green Bay has won in Sioux Falls in, in the history of the organization. Well, congratulations to you, Coach. Coach Roberson is in his fourth season as the head coach uh, for the Green Bay Blizzard. He's been with them since 2012. He was the 2019 uh, Coach of the Year. And so I just got a few questions here real quick. Uh, you were also a former player. Uh, yeah. So will you give the viewers here just kind of a, a quick background of who Coach Corey Roberson is and how he got to be the head coach? 
Yeah, quick background. Uh, you know, first of all, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, played a little small D3 football here in Wisconsin. Jumped into this indoor game right away um, in, in 2002 in the NIFL back in the day. And, you know, played with a few teams. Um, had some success uh, playing for uh, Coach Magic um, out there in uh, Rapid City uh, in South Dakota, out that way in Wyoming or whatnot, and uh, over in Billings with uh, Haran O'Neill. Um, Got into uh, my last year plan was in 2010 with the blizzard. Uh, I was kind of hit and miss at that point in time. I was starting to settle down in my uh, career and uh, started coaching in 2012 with Coach Fuller. He uh, he took a chance on me in 2012 and uh, Tommy again in 2014 and Coach Williams again after that. Um, and then things happened, whereas though uh, with new ownership coming in during that process as well, um, you know, they just kind of kept me around and, and and gave me the reins in 2018. And here we are. Uh, you know, as the head coach, you know, going on the fourth year. You know, you mentioned a couple Hall of Fame coaches there and, and Coach Haran O'Neill and, and Coach Fuller, and you just beat another Hall of Fame coach and, and Coach Riggs this past weekend. Uh, so you've now won two games in a row against the Storm, and you've got them in back-to-back -back weeks. Is it easier or more difficult to play a team back-to-back? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, honestly, I think it's more difficult back to back, uh, especially, you know, a Hall of Fame coach like Coach Riz. When you think of the IFL, you his name always at the top top of that conversation, no matter uh, where you're from, where you at. Uh, when you say IFL indoor football, Coach Riggs name is going to come up as, you know, the guru um, in, in, in the IFL. Uh, and you just never know what, what he's going to do now. Right. You know, you got him back to back. I think the team that that end up on the losing end of the first of two games always have an opportunity to make the adjustments. And then at that point, it's up to us to figure out what those adjustments are and make our adjustments to play play big ball football. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's more difficult. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's Friday night, 6.05 kickoff, live to you guys uh, on YouTube. It'll also be on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, multiple platforms for you guys to, to, to check into. Just a couple more questions, and I'll let you get back to uh, game planning here, Coach. So since you first started coaching back in 2012, became the head coach in 2019, uh, how has the IFL become more challenging uh, as a coach? I think the IFL, I think ownership have done a great job of uh, recruiting the talent as far as the coaches. I think the coaches um, at, at every team is is top-notch coaches. Um, and I think the players that they're bringing in, I think with the XFL, uh, with our partnership joining with the XFL, um, this year alone has uh, amplified the talent, the talent pool that we we are all able to pull from. But, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's a quarterback and coaches league and a head coaches league. And I, I think the uh, the talent that the coaches are bringing in or the player personnel director of, of that team is bringing in is um, is remarkable. You know, and you said it there, coach, and you, and you got a great ownership group there. And, and, and Kathy and Larry Trinkler, uh, they are fully invested game day. When I went up there for your first game, I mean, Kathy was all decked out and in costume. And I mean, Larry was was up there, even though uh, Frisco had a sizable lead. He was still up there uh, invested in every single play. So you got a great ownership group uh, in, in, the, in the Tranklers. And, and that's what makes our league is great ownership groups. Uh, which recruit, recruits great coaches, which recruits great players. And that's why we've got a great league uh, in our 15th season. Last question here for you. And we'll let you, uh, we'll let you go. Uh, the goal, the goal is 8-5-2023. That's the IFL national championship game, the dollar loan center, IFL national championship game. We just had a major announcement. Uh, that game will be live on CBS sports. You guys uh, will hear more about that uh, here in a little bit, but you were there last year as a spectator. I understand the goal is to be participating this year. Absolutely. Tell the listeners why this is a must attend event. Uh, I mean, it was, I was, I was blown away by the, the atmosphere. I've been to a couple of championships out of my four years as the head coach, as a spectator. So, you know, we, we, we are hopeful to be playing in this game uh, come August 5th. Uh, but the, the whole setup, I think IFL, uh, the dollar loan center did a great job with uh, bringing in uh all different venues and vendors from uh, all walks of life and, and making this a remarkable event. Um, the atmosphere at the Dollar Loan Center doing the championship game, the players on the field, the coaches, both teams. It was very exciting to see uh, and very exciting to witness, um, you know, the end results, uh, you know, favorite Northern Arizona last year, but even the off the field atmosphere, you know, with the uh, the Friday night event that you hosted 
um, that the front office uh, of the IFL hosted over there at the, uh, the uh, pregame and postgame party. So, um, no, I, I recommend everyone, uh, if you have an opportunity to go to it, uh, you wouldn't want to miss it. Just with the festivities that's all lined up that uh, the IFL has. And, you know, it, it, like I said, it was a great experience for me. All right. Well, listen, Coach, I appreciate your time. I know you just got done with practice. Got to get back uh, to game planning. But uh, Friday night, 6.05 kickoff, Sioux Falls at Green Bay. Should be another outstanding game. Coach Roberson, as always, appreciate your time. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Todd. And so there we have it, Coach Roberson. Uh, big game. Kicks off our seven-game slate uh, for this this uh, upcoming weekend. So you guys stay tuned here. I want to talk a little bit about our CBS Sports announcement and uh, just some details surrounding that, and then we'll wrap up the show. So sit tight. We'll be right back. So let's talk CBS Sports. Uh, we had a major announcement yesterday uh, in, involving CBS Sports. Uh, it, it's 55 million plus homes is, is who CBS broadcasts to. And this does not, CBS Sports Network, and this does not include the streaming platforms uh, that are involved with this, which will be announced at a later date. Uh, so exciting, biggest platform we've ever been on as, as a, a league going into our 15th season. Uh, remember, our number one goal is to create an event that everybody wants to be a part of. And so players, if you're currently not playing in the IFL, get over here. We encourage you guys. Come on over. We would love to have you because we're building a destination event that everybody's going to want to play in, participate in, and uh, it is now being broadcast on our biggest platform we've ever been involved with, CBS Sports uh, Network. This is our first announcement of many as we start our preparation for August 5th, 2023, the Dollar Loan Center IFL National Championship. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. As you can see here on the uh, the link, you can go to iflnationalchampionship.com and you can purchase your tickets now. So I encourage you guys to get the seats that you want. Um, and so just a few details. I don't want to over talk this uh, because it's pretty straightforward, but we didn't know. We did not pay a bunch of of money for this partnership. It is a partnership uh, where they control a lot of the inventory. We also get some of the inventory uh, when it comes to the commercials and things to sell, but we have learned from other leagues failures. All right. We're not just going to sit here and stroke a big check and hope people pay attention to us. We do things the right way. And uh, this was the right partnership for us with CBS sports network. Uh, there is a minimum. So as you read this, there's a minimum three game deal over the next three years, meaning minimum. Minimum is our three national championship games over the next three years. The maximum is kind of up to us, uh, meaning we have the opportunity for many more games to be broadcast on CBS Sports Network. But right now, what we're announcing is the next three national championship games uh, will be on CBS Sports Network. Stay tuned uh, for more when it comes to uh, this partnership. Um, we also, we're currently in our second year of a three-year deal for this game being in Vegas. The CBS Sports uh, broadcasting it has nothing to do with the location. Now, the Dollar Loan Center in Vegas is perfect uh, to throw a huge party, and at some point we say a championship game is going to break out. Uh, but that's not to say that there isn't other great cities uh, to host us in the future. Right now, we have two years left on this. This has nothing to do with our three-year agreement uh, in CBS Sports. And so those are just some of the details. I know some people had, had, had made comments in regards to that. There's some information for you. Uh, and, and But exciting CBS Sports will be broadcasting this August 5th, 2023. Uh, get your tickets now. Going to be an outstanding event. All right, guys, that is all I have for you for uh, today's show. Uh, it, that, that was a great show. We've got a huge week six coming up here. All 14 teams uh, are in action this coming weekend. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, and just wait for our next big announcement because it's coming.
So, guys, thank you. Week six inside the IFL. Uh, we'll see you guys this weekend. Thanks a lot.